Okay, welcome everybody. So this is a talk about scaling out Eclipse Hono. Um, and James was so kind to lay out the foundation this morning uh, by providing an overview of how the general IoT architecture looks like. And it's kind of easy to pick up on that now because uh, Eclipse Hono plays an important, important role in such an architecture. Um, by means of uh, being the link between devices in the field of the gateways and the cloud backend, that is what Honos is about. I will get to that later. So, who, who are we guys? Dan, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. So, uh, I'm a software engineer at Redkit, working mostly in messaging and IoT for the last couple of years. Uh, I'm involved in Hono, I'm involved in Capua, and I'm coming from the Apache Active Q background doing messaging for the last decade. Yeah, my name is Kai Udala. I work at Bosch Software Innovations. I'm the uh, project lead of Eclipse Hono, and I'm also involved in California and Leshan and other Eclipse projects dealing with device connectivity. So what is Hono about? I, I will not talk about that in depth, it's just for those guys who have never heard about Hono. Um, Hono is about providing a uniform API to devices and large numbers of devices that you want to connect to a cloud. And uh, it is mostly about abstracting away the particularities of arbitrary device communication protocols so that you can talk and interact with the devices in a uniform way. When you connect these devices, you either are in the lucky position that you create a single application and have a homogeneous number of devices or they all speak the same device communication protocol. Uh, but if you targeting a larger installation or systems where you want to connect different types of, uh, of devices, then you will probably face issues like the ones outlined here on this slide. So on the left hand side you have things, arbitrary things, using different types of communication protocols with all their pecu peculiarities and problems and challenges. And on the right hand side you have the cloud where you want to run your business application, where you want to get the data to and where you want to take control of the devices and make use of the data. Um, when you when you connect all these devices and you think about the, the type of data that you that exchange with these devices, then um, the telemetry stream, the data flowing from the devices to the cloud, is probably the more prevalent one. It is usually by orders of magnitude larger in volume and, and number of messages than the command and control direction. That is simply because this is the data that you want to act upon, versus the command and control is mostly for configuring a, a device or uh, turning it on or off or something like that, so that happens quite less often. Um, with this difference in, in volume also comes a uh, difference in, in the, the dimensions that you want to optimize these, these data streams into. Uh, so for the telemetry data, it is more important that you scale out with the number of messages so that you provide high throughput. As James already pointed out this morning, it is not so. It is not a big problem if you lose out or miss out on one of these messages because if you, for example, have a stream of temperature data, then if you miss out on one of them, it is no big problem because the next temperature will not be that far off from the previous one, and you can easily interpolate. However, the other direction needs to be optimized for reliability, and because it's important that you actually really turn on the device instead of trying to turn on the device and never knowing whether it has been turned on or not. So this needs to be optimized for reliability and it needs to scale out with the number of devices. And these are the challenges and issues that we're trying to address with Honor. Um, now if you have only uh, thousands of devices, you can easily do that with uh, one of the libraries that exist or with a single installation of couple of, uh, for example, and you connect your devices and off you go, that is usually no big deal. But once you start about scaling out to millions of devices, you need to teach your old dog some new tricks, and this is where the Hono comes in. So the, the, the basic building blocks of Hono look like this. Uh, on the left hand side we have the devices connecting with their particular communication protocol, and we abstract that away by means of a component called a protocol adapter. So the protocol adapter speaks to the device's communication protocol. Um, by default we ship with HTTP and MQTT, but this is basically extensible you can build your custom protocol adapter if you have a, a, a proprietary communication protocol, but we're also planning on adding co-op support or AMQP 1.0 support directly, stuff like that. And then we, uh, we have the API endpoints and security components, which provide the 
Um, the, the standard APIs, what I mentioned before, the uniform API for accessing and interacting with the device. So these are basically the telemetry and event APIs, and this is also where security is enforced by means of uh, authenticating the devices and uh, authorizing access to the data of the devices. And then, once that has all happened, for the telemetry reduction, for example, we uh, forward the data to an AMQP messaging network, which is basically responsible for distributing the data to where you actually want to consume the data. So there's a, a link between HONO, the, the device connectivity layer, and the application, if you will. Or, uh, for example, uh, you would also position Kapwa there behind that AMQP network. Uh, an important feature of HONO is that, you, that it provides end-to-end -end flow control along this line of communication, uh, meaning the system always makes sure that you cannot push more data into the system than it can actually handle. This is uh, implemented, uh, provided by a feature of AMQP 1.0, which means that the consumer on the right-hand side always tells the sender how much data he can actually process, and this is called by means of giving him credit. So a credit basically uh, yeah, corresponds to one message it can actually process. So if a sender gives the sender 100 credits, it means I can process 100 messages, go on. And once after one, you know, depending on the, pay, the rate of processing, the consumer can then restock the sender with additional credits or not. And if it doesn't, then the sender cannot send more data. And uh, this way we can build up back pressure up to the protocol adapter so that the protocol adapters start discarding or refusing any more data from the devices if the downstream consumers are not able to process them anymore. So how do we scale that out? In the original design, we had uh, a distinction between the protocol adapters on the left-hand side of an exemplary MQTT adapter, and we had the HONO server component, which uh, contained all the other services that we have, messaging, authentication, device registration. And uh, yeah, in this original design, the only option to scale was basically scaling the MQTT adapters. That was easy because they are basically concerned with only connecting a device, so that all, all the state they have is inherent to the connection with the device. And you could scale out the monolithic uh, HONO server here. Um, this, in, in, in the beginning, we thought that was not a big problem, because whenever a message came in, we wanted to make sure that the message actually comes from a device that is uh, authenticated properly or is registered for a particular tenant, and make sure that the device is actually who, who he claims he is, and that the message comes from a source that we trust. In order to do so, the messaging service interacted with the authentication and the device registry service, and because that was all in the same process, that was no big deal. So for every message coming in, the messaging service simply invoked a method on authentication or device registration and made sure that the device is actually the right one. So, however, in real-world applications, this is usually not what you want to have, because authentication and device registration are usually provided by a other existing components. So for example, if you want to use Kapwa in the back end, then you already have a device registration as we had heard before. So you want to make sure that you can use that data in that device registration. Now if you apply this pattern, then this immediately results in having to do a remote call into another service for each and every message. So this brings down performance, or basically brings to a halt. That's, that doesn't really work. So the next design then, or what we do today, is uh, a microservice design where we uh, have the auth server and the device registry uh, outside of or in separate processes. Um, the different coloring here is supposed to indicate that the darker one, the HONO messaging, is the, the service component that is, that is the one that HONO de defines and this is the, the functionality that we need or that we implement. And the lighter ones are the ones uh, that are basically optional or that are not really optional, they are required, but they are supposed to be implemented by third parties or by existing systems. So uh, what we only need from these services is one particular operation that we rely on and that can be easily implemented as a facade on an existing system like that. Um, I'll give an example of what this basically means here. Um, when a device sends a message, in this example it publishes an MQTT message to the, to the MQTT adapter. It uh, sends a, a message in, in the payload and the MQTT adapter now needs to make sure that the device 
is actually registered in, in a tenant and is enabled, because only in that case we want to actually accept the message from it. So in order to do so, it invokes a message called assert with the tenant ID and the device ID of the device, of the authenticated device, and the device registry creates a, a Java web token asserting this information by signing it with a, with a cryptographic signature. And it returns that token to the MQTT adapter, who then attaches it to the, to the connection that it has with the device, or it caches it locally. And then it includes, sorry, it includes the token in the message when it sends it forward to Hono Messaging. And so Hono Messaging can simply validate the token by uh, validating the signature on the token, and knowing then, okay, this device is really registered in the, in the tenant and is enabled, so I can actually process this message and forward it to the MQTT messaging network. So this way, there is no need for doing a remote call from home messaging to the device registry service for each and every message, but we only do this once, we, would, we get the first message for a device connecting to a protocol adapter. So this works very similar to for, for other protocols. Um, when you have a, a, an HTTP protocol adapter, you could have a session being established with the device, um, and then simply attach the token to the session. However, in our current HTTP adapter, we do not hold sessions because that is not what most small devices want to do, actually. They want to go through the whole process of authenticating and creating the, the assertion Sim because of simplicity, because these small devices usually are not capable of managing a session or handling tokens and whatever. So they simply include uh, some headers, a basic authentication header, and then Send their data. So this is the way we, we scale out on the on the message on the uh, Hono side. Um, what we currently have is the uniform APIs in, in Hono 05 for consuming telemetry data and events, meaning we have downstream direction from the device to the cloud. And we have these standard protocol that as I mentioned them. We uh, authenticate each and every device that connects to one of the protocol adapters. We support different um, authentication mechanisms, the most prevalent one being, of course, something like basic authentication with a username and password, that is what most small devices actually do. But we can also support um, client certificate-based authentication or authentication uh, that is done as part of the TLS handshake. Um, yeah. And with that, I guess we get to the point where I hand over to, to Dan, and Dan will now talk about the scalability of the messaging. Yeah, so Kai covered the orange boxes, I covered the green box. The, the other ones. Yeah, so, but before we, we, we go deeper into this topic, I, I wanted to get back to the, you know, the, the basic architecture, uh, architecture box of, of the, of the HONO in the, in the simple, simple deployment and, and explain why, why, why do we have two boxes in, instead of one. So basically, you know, when, when people are thinking about uh, about messaging, they always, by default, think about broker messaging or, or what, what we call store and port forward messaging. That's that's a traditional how we always always done messaging by having a, a broker as an intermediary between the producer and consumer. And as you can see from from this diagram, there's a two contracts here. So the producer sends the message to the broker and and you know finish. It's part of the job, and then it's, it's the job of the broker to deliver that message to one or more consumers. And, you know, there's a many differences here how this process can work. So, you know, is there a reliability included in the process? You know, to, to, does the broker need to guarantee the delivery of, of the message or not? But, you know, this is the, the basic top story for our partner. And it's good. It, it works for, for, for a lot of things. Uh, and one thing that, that it brings to, to the messaging system always is that you know time asynchronicity between time decoupling between the producers and consumers. So producers can produce messages on their own time, and consumers maybe are not available at the moment. They can come later and, and consume things on their own pace. And the job of the broker is, is to, to make that available to you know put the back pressure in the system if it needs to be, to put reliability in the system if, if it needs to be. Uh, Kai mentioned NQP 1.0 and uh, one of the characteristics of the NQP uh, protocol which brings us to, 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 to things a little bit differently is that it's one of the rare messaging protocols that, that's truly asymmetrical. 
So that means that it really doesn't require a broker on, on the other side. So the, the messaging protocol itself just assumes two endpoints that, that communicate with, with each other. So of course you can implement broker messaging on it, you know, having endpoints like producers, brokers and consumers and, and designing those contracts between them. But you can basically also direct, directly connect producers and consumers or even cre create uh, another component which we have which, which, called, which is called QP dispatch router or you know like a message router which basically just serves a, a, a simple routing uh, routing role in, in, in the messaging system so the, the big difference between the broker and the router in, in all other pictures that, that, that we're going to see later on is that router never uh, owns takes the ownership of all the message. So, you know, the, the contracts for the messaging layer is directly between the producer and consumer, and router is just here to, to make that communication possible, to route the messages between, you know, multiple consumers and multiple producers in different patterns, depending on, on, on you know, how uh, addresses are being, uh, being, uh, being connected. And besides, you know, that protocol symmetry that they talked to, uh, as Kai said, uh, the, the NQP has a flow control built into the protocol itself, so that we, that we can o o always have that notion uh, about uh, capacity of, of the, the network. So the consumer says, I can receive 10 messages and don't send me more than that until I'm, I'm, I'm ready. So, a little bit more about, you know, a high availability or reliability in, in this kind of system is that, you know, you can obviously see that one single router is a central point of failure but the good thing with the routers is that, as we can see, we will see later that they can be uh, configured in, in, in a network, so multiple routers, so basically you can create a, a, a duplicate routes between the endpoints and then that's how you achieve a basic uh, basic uh, the reliability in the system. So one router, if it goes down, there's alternative routes for the messages to flow. The only thing that we lose with this is basically that time de decoupling. So the consumers must be there to consume messages. There's nothing. There's no caching of messages anywhere in, in, inside of the system. But what what we achieve is is basically uh, better scalability because brokers, you know. You know Doing this for for a long time, you know, I, I'm seeing brokers as a very very specialized databases. Like, you know, they're there to store messages, store transaction data, session data, consumer data. There's a lot of state state in there, and as you know, with, with any any stateful software, it, it's getting hard to scale uh, after after some some point. Uh, on the other hand, you know, routers are you know much simpler things to do and much simpler pieces of software basically stated, stateless, doing only messaging routing, don't have anything to, to, you know, to do with statefulness. So by themselves they're much more scalable than the brokers in the first place, but it's much easier to, to configure them and, and to scale them in, in environments like the Kubernetes and, and things like that. But the, the good thing is that you know uh, we can make mix and match things as, as we will see a, a later on. So if, if you take a, a, a little bit of thinking about you know, what we have now, now in, in terms of other semantics that we can use in a system like this. So we can have typical store and forward or broker messaging, we have queues and topics, you know, doing point to point or, or publish subscribe panel messaging, and we can do a similar communication patterns only using direct messaging messages. So what, what we call any cast is basically point to point communication in a direct manner or multicast and broadcast when you want to you know, send a single message to a, a multiple consumer directly without storing forward. So what we want to do is you know, going to the, from the first picture when we have a single router and a broker uh, deployed inside of the phone for different kind of communication patterns, uh, we want to to provide a, a next scalability uh, uh, goal by, by creating a platform, an NQP platform, that, that can scale easily for all these uh, addressing semantics and communication patterns that, that, we, that, that we saw before. And it should be easy, easy because the whole from the ground up is designed by having clean interfaces toward the, the NQP 1.0 infrastructure. 
So it should be easy just to you know replace a single router, single broker to, to something that, that's truly tru truly scalable. And one of those uh, projects uh, that we designed outside of one office is called Enlas. And that's one of, of important things to say that you know after a while we decided that we don't want to do scalable messaging in Kono. Kono should be uh, focused on IoT parts of the of, of the of the connectivity platform and, and that scalable messaging should be done in a separate project. At the moment it's 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 endless. And the basic idea is just more what I described so far. So we can have a, a router network usually you know deployed as a, as a mesh router network so that we have that reliability of that, that network that can accept a large number of connections that can deal with a large number of addresses and that can also by itself uh, handle all the direct traffic that, that we have in, in the system. And you know what I didn't mention so far that you know in, in direct traffic is how you know Honor is now designed the telemetry we, we do that through the direct the direct others because there's no point buffering those messages if, if we are you know doing telemetry as a QS zero or at most once if you don't have a capacity if you don't have a consumers we will just drop them somewhere and you know but we can we can accept a, a lot if, if if the system is, is configured properly and then be, be, behind that layer that gateway layer of of uh, routers we basically have uh, our brokers for the destinations, for the addresses that, uh, that, that uh, needs to have a, a store and forward semantics. So, for example, if, if we have a queue and we want to you know, connect consumer and producer over that queue, the message will go through the router network to a specific broker in the network, be stored there, and from, from that point on, uh, delivered to, to, to a consumer on, on the other side. So, uh, Enmas is built on, on these principles and it's built to run on side of the OpenShift and, and Kubernetes. My slides are a little bit messed. But, you know, what I want to achieve with that is basically to create uh, an open source uh, messaging platform and open source in, in terms of using open source and open standards. So, it's MQP 1.0 and we also uh, want to support MQTT by itself. Uh, we want to support all these communication patterns. We, we want to be easy, easy to you know, scale and, and deploy and manage a, 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 a platform like this, which is you know, a, a main, so some of the like, you know, no-brain uh, requirements from a platform like this. One more important thing is that uh, we wanted to, to have it you know, multi-tenant from the ground up. So the same as the Capo is multi-tenant, the Kona is multi-tenant, it's important for any cloud platform today to be a multi-tenant. And what I mean by, by tenant here is that we can support multiple other spaces, so that two different accounts, applications can use addresses with the same names and maybe you know, different, different uh, semantics. And of course, it, it, because it's built to be deployed you know, using Kubernetes and OpenShift, it should be able to be deployed on premise or in cloud or in some kind of the, the hybrid hybrid uh, environment. So uh, when I want to start, when I talk about Emas, is is uh, uh, you know this user console because you know I, I see as a, as a message user you know when you come to a messaging system you're not interested in to, you know is it a broker is it a router how I deploy it. What I want to know is, you know, which are my addresses, where, where can I connect my applications, and you know, which semantics is is uh, is defined for, for a certain address, right? So, is this a queue or this is a topic? How how do I connect these applications? You know, doing this messaging system. So everything starts with with, with an address in in Enmas. You basically have a console or an or an API where you can define all 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 basic uh, types of uh, of uh, of addresses. I'm sorry about the slide formats I exported from the Google slides because there's no Wi-Fi and then now it's messed <laughs> in PowerPoint. <laughs> so 
you, you can define multiple things. For, for every address, you, you can define is the address stored and forward, or and is it a multicast? And with, with covering these two parameters, you can define your queues, topics, you know, direct anycast or, or, or multicast addresses. And depending on, on what you do there, you know, the, the right uh, the, the right deployment will, will be provided to you by the by the Emma's platform. There was one more spe specificity to the addresses, and that's called flavors. Uh, as, as long as, as we always want to see, you know, uh, messaging system as black boxes, that's never the case in, in reality. So, two queues are, are never the, the same. You can have one queue that you want only to keep in memory, and, and one other, other is which is, you know, highly scalable and, and it has high availability brokers behind it. So, flavor is, is kind of a, a mechanism to achieve that in, inside of NMAS. So. The message operator, the, the guy who you know runs the platform and, and keep it keep it up running, can can define different profiles or, or flavors for, for different addresses. And then when you you know try to create your queue, you, you can say, okay, this is just a little demo queue. I don't need three brokers behind it to, to, to support the load on, on this queue. So this is one of the, my favorite diagrams lately and trying to explain to people what's going on there. <laughs> but uh, I, I, don't, I won't go too much into details here because we don't have that much time, but this is a, a, a basic architecture of, of, of the MLS. So all the clients are, are coming through the messaging layer and that's basically the, the, the mesh of the, of, of the Qubit dispatch routers. We have also, uh, as I said, support for MQTT, so there's a couple of components there doing the, the protocol. Uh, the, the protocol uh, conversion between the, between NQTT and uh, and the NQP, and also as NQTT uh, clients assume a broker behind it, we need a couple more components that, that basically handles that state in, in, inside of the platform, like uh, a last will and testament service, uh, which is needed there, and then behind. The messaging layer, we, we have deployed uh, brokers that, that you can handle a, a specific uh, queue or a topic. So that's basically the, the messaging kind of side of, of the platform, where the clients connect and you know where the messages are flowing. On, on the left side, we have an administration part of the platform. So the messaging tenant comes there through the console or through the API and, and creates creates uh, addresses that, that it wants to use. And depends, depending on, on you know, those configuration parameters, that the platform will deploy certain brokers or, or routers in the network, configure them to, to route the messages appropriately and, and to, to hold those messages on, on certain brokers. So we can go maybe... We, we can go maybe really quickly you know, to, to the different uh, components. So address uh, controller is basically uh, controlling addresses and address spaces, so that's the that's the only com component here. It's not you know tied to a certain tenant. It means to allows us to create different address spaces in the platform and, and for each address in that space pro provide a, a appropriate uh, appropriate uh, uh, configuration. And that address controller talks to the OpenShift master, which basically then then uh, stores the addresses as as Kubernetes resources. We, we have a, a config serve that you know listens to those notifications about changing in, into the pod configurations. If it scales up something or, or not, I, I want to say you know Kubernetes provides you a, a lot of in terms of how we're gonna you know scale services, pods, and things like that. But we need a lot of glue there as well to connect these things together to know you know okay there's a new router here. How do we find existing routers? How we configure it? Where are my queues and where are my topics? That's all part of the of the admin uh, box we, we see here. And ad, ad, admin box is per tenant. So every new tenant you create on the system, it will have its own address box, so its own console and queue scheduler and, and things like that. So config server basically we design the system in, in a messaging oriented way. So all all the components between themselves are uh, communicating using the MQP 1.0. So the job of the config server is, is to you know uh, listen to, to the Kubernetes object changes and, and, and convert that to, to an, an MQP 1.0 uh, APIs. 
uh, the router agents, uh, error agent uh, configure routers. The queue scheduler makes sure that there's a there's a appropriate you know queue on a certain broker behind it. And because uh, the the topic subscriptions are, are basically a kind of queues, even more complicated in, in my opinion, you need another subscription service that will make sure that that you know the certain uh, the certain uh, subscription is hosted on, on, a, on a particular particular broker. What's more important, uh, one more thing that's always important for any kind of messaging system is the, the you know, monitoring of that system. Kubernetes and OpenShift provide a, a normal monitoring in terms of pods and containers and things like that, but you know, messaging people are interested in different metrics. So every component in, 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 uh, in MLAS uh, provides metrics of, of, about you know number of messages, consumers, connections coming to the system. Uh, it's all exposed using Prometheus and, and Jolokia and can be easily uh, easily visualized in in, uh, in Grafana. So that's some some basic stuff. Some some of these things are are uh, in progress. Some some of these things are even implemented. The authentication and authorization is very important. So we can more easily uh, integrate with external services like Kono and, and share that, that common, uh, common domain. Uh, then implement support for more protocols in terms of like if you, if you think about the message, uh, if you think about uh, MS as a general messaging platform, not just related to Kono, because if you are using it with Kono, the Kono is doing all the work uh, in protocol conversion, right? And, and then, you know, even if it, uh, we provide this scalable messaging, messaging but with a certain price. If, if you just go from the JMS land and, and you have your, your, your broker, that broker has a lot of other functionality that, that's basically being lost by these brokers being virtualized. So, doing distributed transactions or, or, or message groups and, and, and things like that, it's not possible to, to do today in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in MLAS. And some people, you know, still want to do that. So, so we want to, to provide another broker space that will expose brokers directly to, to the clients with, you know, loss of scalability, gain more features. And you, you can't see here, but we want also want to provide uh, more uh, more mes message message firing. So, so support for Apache Kafka is also something that's that, that's coming soon. Uh, these are some resources, of course. Links to Homer and Emmas and the, the other lying uh, messaging components, AKMQ Artemis and Cupid Dispatch Router. So that's it. Any questions from them? For Dan and, and Kai, we have time for one or two questions. Um, so if you're doing message routing, does that potentially make network security more challenging because you have to have like firewalls <coughs> opened up to enable direct connection? Not necessarily. It's the same thing. So devices are connecting to the first endpoint in, in, into the system. So the router can accept connections like everything else. We assume that after that point, it's our internal system. So the router, you know, it's not exposed to, to, to other people. We add more.